Joffrey Renly Rob Stark are all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. The royal caravan marched across the muddy roads leading towards the modest castle and town of Whitford. Benfrey Lancer looked back at the Queen's modest host, hoping that they would have time to bathe and get changed before meeting with Lady Josso. The boy's eyes drew across his various companions. To his left rode Lady Peel, her stern composure as cool as her namesake. He had found her quite frightening when he had first met her, but she'd quickly warmed to him, almost seeing him like a younger brother or son. To his right was Sir Joba Rack, a strapping young man with the heavy-set build the family was known for. He looked up ahead. At the front of the column rode the rest of the Queen's Guard. Sir Donico Shycross had secured the right flank, the arms of his family adoring his armour. If Benfrey hadn't known better, he would almost have assumed that the man was your standard Andal Northman, with his broad shoulders and bronze-coloured hair. His violet eyes, however, told a different tale. To the left, Sir Glendon, the bear of Sevensport, while he was rather slow, his loyalty to the royal family and Lyanna herself was unquestionable. Benfrey had heard he was a survivor of the Dragon Conquest and had been enslaved and gelded at an early age. He had managed to escape on a vessel from Lys and had been brought into the household. At the head of it all rode Sir Lister the Loyal. The Grey Knight was decked in a new cloak the Queen had bestowed upon the old warrior for his lifelong service. As for the Queen herself, she rode in a carriage alongside her ladies-in-waiting. The giggling and chatter could be heard from within. The Queen certainly is quite the social creature. Benfrey found himself saying before realising he had fought aloud. Uh, my apologies, my lady and sirs. Sir Lister turned to the saddle to face the young knight. Don't be. It's good for the queen to make conversation. It helps her for when she has to speak with her bannermen. Pierre gave a small chuckle. Or perhaps she's simply chatting with Lady Alice. Your wife is certainly trying her best to befriend Lyanna. Or is that incorrect to assume, Sir Donico? Her voice was full of suspicion. The Valyrian visibly tensed. That is not your concern, Lady Pia. My wife's business is hers alone. The air of hostility was so palpable that Benfrey was certain he could cut it with his sword. Be on your guard. We're approaching Whitford. Sir Lister barked as the city walls rose in the distance. The white gate named after the river that ran to its east opened for their arrival. The higher inner walls of the Josso castle could now be seen along with the double axes of House Josso flying from every tower, the great seven-pointed star flapping beside them. Lady Aline Josso sat a horse waiting beneath the portcullis, a huge smile upon her face for her childhood friend and queen's arrival. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Citadel of me, Grand Mr. Stitch, where we're continuing with our Knights of Andalia series. Here we are as Queen Leanna, who's now 25 with her two daughters. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed the overview stream last weekend. If you haven't checked that out and you are interested, then be sure to check that out where you can see a lot more about the in-depth lore and all the characters that are currently alive. There was a lot of guardianships and marriages and such that we did sort out in that, so you'll see them popping out up at the beginning of this episode. So, right, yes, in the last episode we were coronated, we held a great tourney, which Stefan Roseheart won, and then we went to war with the Blackwoods to try and get a little bit of victory and something more to celebrate underneath and Darlian rule, hopefully get people back on side. So we're going to try and claim this Blackwood land. We have got many Knights of the Vale here marching down into Willowwood, which will hopefully be a pretty easy war for us to win. And that will nearly finish those borders that we do want. We still need Kinect and we still need the Lordship of the Trident here, as well as one or two other little Lordships here and there to finish our southern border for what we plan to get. So... Um, hopefully we can continue to get that. We've got 70,000 men that we can call upon now, so Lyanna is doing a great job of reuniting um, the realm. And we're going on the opinion of our vassals. Literally, everybody pretty much loves Lyanna, apart from the Aaron Stars, but that's to be expected, isn't it? So we won't worry too much about that. Right, so let's unpause straight away and start getting into this war. We'll let those guardianships and such... Um, pop up. We've got one between the eventual heir of Barrington and Pia Snow, which is a great match. Um, yeah, we're starting to get our troops to meet up here in Willowwood. Um, a guardianship between Benfrey Lancer and Jonas Hooton. A guardianship contract between Septon Guywin of Snow and Theobald Salzard. Um, a guardianship contract between Lord Danies the Wise and Carl Crownless. And I think there was many more. There was also some betrothals and marriages and such that we were trying to sort out. So we'll see how those go. Um, 
I reject your insulting suggestion that Demiria, uh, Demiria will never marry Veon, Lord Otho of Norfolk. Demir, oh, okay. Ah, okay, yeah, but we got rid of that one anyway. We found a better match for him anyway. Uh, peace with you. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Giles and Harstein. Um, Giles, Kington, and Harstein, seven star, perfect. Uh, gladly accept the guardianship contract between Sir Byram and Garibald. Rook, perfect. Yeah, there was loads that we sorted out with all the promising youngsters of the realm. If you want to see who they are, then obviously just check out the stream. Um, Lord Redfort's daughter and Giles Kingston again. Um... Oswin Steelheart and Sir Joa Rack, um, Eleanor Rack and Lord Enger the Evil, Hugar Highstar and Benfrey Lancer, Harbert Josso and Sir Benjicott Sevenstar, Enger Seymour and Lord Yorick of Wickedon, and Ermin Bloom and Queen Leanna the King. Wow, I forgot how many we actually sorted out. Um, uh, Tessera Shycross with Sir Donico Shycross. Um, Jelana Rack and Veon Rack to get married. Perfect. Have they accepted that? I've decided to accept your suggestion. Perfect. And a guardianship contract between Queen Liana and Lord Ellery um, Morgoth. Okay, so that looks like it's all of them finally. Right, so we've got 10,000 men here in Willowwood. Let's merge those together. We'll have, yep, yeah, we'll have more evolved leading that. Why not? With Enger the Evil, who for some reason has become an incredible commander in his old age. Let's march on to this Blackwood host. We'll defeat the Blackwood host first and we'll march those other 2,000 onto the Blackwood Vale to start getting that under siege. We'll let things tick along slowly. At the age of 63, um, Alyssa Roseheart died of cancer. Oh, the wife of Colmore Bloom. That's a shame. So that ends that. The Greyjoys are still invading the neck, which is a shame. Um, but we will try and take that back. Once we have our full power back and we've got these lands that we want, we will finally take vengeance upon the Ironborn. How is Enger doing? He's okay. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. Um, Your Grace, for some time now, I've been in the employ of Arkan. Or, no, I do not want any Dragon Riders coming into Andalia. Is there any factions other than Crown? No, just Crown Loyalists. Who have we got in that? Danies the Wise. Um... Ben Free High Star, Bellis the Late of Seven's Guard, um, Stefan Roseheart, Yorick of Wickedon, Yorick Templeton, Enger the Evil, and Lord Willem of Gultan. So we've got a very good look crown loyalist there. Is there anything else we can do on here? We could search for a smith. We've got a lot of money, so why not? Let's um let's search for a smith and see what we can build. Do we really need a weapon? We've already got plenty of weapons. Armor we don't really need. Let's create some jewels befitting Queen Lyanna. Why not? Let's see what we can make. Right, we should be able to crush this army very easily. And that'll be pretty much the whole Blackwood army completely crushed. And then all we're going to have to do is siege their lands and get that under our control. We'll have a few houses that we can use there. We have got a few other houses that I do need to replace with some of those custom ideas that you guys have put forward. You've put forward a lot of awesome ideas in the stream as well as in the Discord. Obviously, if you've not joined the Discord yet, why not join the Discord? Great community there. You'll love it in there. And wow, that's put us at 75%. So let's go and siege Blackwood Vale. And it's going to be a very easy victory. A very easy way to expand. How are the Darklings actually doing in their claim for the Riverlands? Because that would be interesting. And you know that I love Harsh Darkling. So that would be pretty cool. Um, they are 57% in favour of House Darkling. So it looks like the Darklings are going to take the Riverlands. So we do need to take this Blackwood Vale before it's too late. Uh, John Quill is such a caring aunt. Always ready to lighten up the mood during a sombre family dinner. Or play with the children. Even though we may disagree from time to time. I cannot deny her accomplishments as an aunt. People like her are rare indeed. Um, if you say so. Right. So there's 912 um, Durandum men here in Haraway's town. Um... As we found out in that stream, the Durandans, although they've got a lot of land, they're not doing too well at keeping the peace in it. They're not doing as well as the Lannisters are doing as a, um, at expanding. So it'll be interesting to see how well their kingdom actually holds. Because it looks like they are going to lose the Riverlands. And they are in a bit of a state. The same with Dawn. There doesn't seem to be going too well in Dawn either. Let's march this army onto Maidstone instead. I may change that to Maidenstone instead. Just change it up slightly just to fit a little bit more with... Obviously, how the Knights of Andalia works. Um, Lady Sybil the Young accepted High King Agar of the Iron Isles peace offer. Is She's in hiding. Um, okay, so that means that the neck now belongs to um, the Ironborn, which is annoying. Right, so has he claimed all of those for himself? Yes, he has. Oh, no, he's left. 
Okay, so Lady Sybil Reed has taken Grey Cran for her own. The Marshes are still around. The Fens are still around. So was it House Blackmire that was um, in Grey Cran? Let's have a look for House Blackmire. It's not going to allow us to invite him. Um, is there any other black? Is there any male Blackmires? Yes, there's you. Can we not invite you to court? No. Well, if we send you a gift, will that allow us to sway you? Yes. So we'll invite him to our court. We don't want the Black Myers to die out. They are some of our loyal vassals, so we want to keep them around. We will obviously help Lady Reed take back her lands, but that's made the Ironborn even more powerful now. They've got a lot of land. They scare me. So, yeah, it's so annoying that we couldn't do anything about that, but we'll be able to do that soon. Let's assault um, Blackwood Vale. It's going to be pretty easy to assault. We, we are going to have to sort out the Ironborn pretty soon, aren't we? They really need putting in their place once Andalia heals a little bit more. Alec Wainwood has had splint mail armor added to his treasury. Interesting. Uh, to the heroic Queen Leanna, peace with you. I gladly accept your invitation to court. Perfect. It's one of our former bannermen. We want to keep them safe. At the age of 45, Manessa Rack died of cancer. That is a shame. She was the wife of Rugwell Seven Star. Yes, of course. A castle town has been built in the cross fort. Perfect. Right. Can we assault this? Um, I will take no sides. I'm not getting involved with wars over the over the narrow sea. Your enemy, Lady Zoa Blackwood, has been captured by Lord Moribold Rack of the Warrior's Way and taken to the Hornwood as a prisoner. Perfect. Hopefully he will release her because she's now going to be one of our bannermen. Enforced demands. The Queen Lyanna's claim on the Blackwood War has ended. Queen Lyanna of Andalia has won. We have successfully seized the High Lordship of Blackwood after defeating Lady Zoa Blackwood of Blackwood. Shall this territory be attached to the personal domains of Seven's Portal? Shall Lady Zoa Blackwood be confirmed as its rightful holder to ensure stability? Lady Zoa can swear fealty to me. There we go. So that is the Blackwood lands now under our control. So we should be able to disband um, our armies okay now. Let's disband all of those. And that is perfect. We're still trying to get this claim on this land here. And that will be near enough all the land that we want to take. So let's have a look. Can we not get her out of prison? No, it's going to be up to Murray Rack. So what house have we got? We've got Maidstone, Black Rush. Oh, and she also owns Fair Market. Okay, so we do need a couple of new houses or lords for those lands. Uh, during the last few days, I have overheard the same conversation again and again. Apparently, a most renowned goldsmith is travelling through Andalia, and my courtiers are prattling excitedly about his work. Perhaps I should invite this man to employ his services. Nothing displays authority like fine jewellery. Yes, of course. The goldsmith, Arnulf, courteously accepted my invitation and arrived at court a mere week later. He has presented me with some sketches of his previous work and several letters of recommendation. I am assured of his skill, although I ask myself just how much money I can spare for a set of crown jewels. We already have crown jewels, so can we not make... Um, one and all shall see the indisputable might of House Seven Star. 500 gold. It improves our vassal opinions. Um, yes, let's go for that. We've got a hell of a lot of money to spend. Let's go all out. And that's making our southern border look much better. Although the Ironborn have put a massive wedge in between our kingdoms. So we do need to sort that out soon. But we'll wait a little while. We'll let our strength recover a bit more. We've now got 75,000 manpower. So we'll just wait a little while. And then we will take revenge upon the Ironborn. When we um, are in the best position to do so. Probably a few more things that we do need to sort out around the realm. We want to make... Um, this jewellery, of course. We could hold a feast. Do you know what? Let's do it. Liana is all about holding these feasts and some affairs and keeping the peace, keeping everybody on side. We want everyone in Andalia to um, keep the peace, obviously, don't we? As I just said, we don't want any more civil wars. The North is in a complete state. They've had a lot of more land taken away from them. Um, during the afternoon, as I went to check on the progress of Master Arnoff, I walked in to see him getting my cousin Ermin to help with the forging process. Together, they were lifting pieces of metal, and Arnoff was showing uh, um, Ermin, Arnoff and Ermin, my god, tongue twister, how to mould the materials into shape. Not exactly what I am paying him for, but a form of service nonetheless. I'm glad Arnoff is helping Ermin to be stronger. Who's Ermin? Ermin Bloom. Oh, wow, who is a genius? Did we not sort out? Yes. He's our own squire, isn't he? Perfect. Um, I'm glad Arnulf is helping Ermin. What do we get from that? Ermin Bloom gains the trait Brawn. Eh? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Awesome. Is he the heir to... Um, no, he's not the heir, unfortunately. But hopefully he will be the heir because he's very impressive. So, yeah, we will keep a close eye on him. 
very impressive. That's the thing that we noticed in the stream, that a lot of the actual heirs to the Lordships are a bit pathetic, but then second and third sums are very impressive. Um, the best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff. We'll spend enough to satisfy everyone's hunger because we don't want to gain the fat trait because that's going to take away some of our attractiveness, which all our lords and ladies obviously love so much about Lyanna. Uh, most of the preparations for the feast have been made. Now I only have to send out invitations. Of course, we're going to invite everybody in Andalia to our feast. Um, while pondering over the guest list for the feast, I wondered if I should invite my friend Magarak. Well, of course, uh, Megarak, of course, she's our friend. And she's also married to our husband's brother now, a seven star. So hopefully cr creating many more little seven stars to be running around the city of Sevensport. We still have the Lord of the Ship of the Crossfort to give away at some point as well. Um, Argrave of Argrave's Highborn Host has declared Argrave's Highborn Host invasion of the net. Yeah. Won't worry about that. We're going to be taking that back pretty soon anyway um everybody was talking about the musicians and i finally had some time off from the preparations of my feast so that i could see them with my own eyes and hear with my own ears what people were talking about the musicians were good and they were looking for a patreon i want to offer you my patronage yes of course so leanne is going to love to have all those but it's a shame that we don't have the newer versions of the mod so that we can hire a bard it is a shame that we can't do that um the wandering minstrel entered the castle singing and did not stop until he found me with a flourishing bow uh, bow and one long sad tone from his lute he finished his song and asked for my patronage i was just looking for some entertainment for my feast perfect Oh, one thing that we did notice in the stream, which I will cover, is Ragnar Maiden, who we sent to the Night's Watch, has deserted and has now joined the King Beyond the Wall, which is interesting. I suppose it was to be expected, and we've got Harlor Raiders again, which is annoying. But um, let's now go for a Queen Lyanna mid-POV. It's Lyanna's first POV, so I hope that you do enjoy. The wine was flowing, and the castle hall was full with the sounds of song and laughter. Lyanna reached over to her husband and felt him take her hand in his home. Their marriage had originally been an awkward affair, but over the years she felt a genuine warmth and affection blossom. It must have been a sign from the Seven. After all, she had been blessed with healthy children. She hoped that tonight they would be comfortable enough to stay in the care of the wet nurse so she may host this fine feast. To her left, she saw her dear brothers and sisters all gathered to join her in celebrating these peaceful times. She felt a sad pang in her heart, she loved her family with all her heart, and she reflected on those she had lost. Even with her siblings, one of them had failed to attend. Sister, are you there? A hand waved in front of her face, rousing her to reality. She gave a small jump and turned, her blue eyes met with the dark purple of a brother she had not seen in a long time. Rio, God, don't startle me like that. The young man smirked and bowed. My apologies, your grace. I'll be sure to make my arrival a good deal louder next time, so you know where I am. The smirk morphed into a smile and the two burst into laughter. This drew the attention of their other brothers and sisters, who got up and greeted their brother. Rio, I'm glad to see you, but why are you here? Benfrey asked. He gave his little brother a suspicious look. Are the Lord giving you trouble again? Rio shook his head. Gods, no, I simply wish to see how my family are faring. You do rarely come down to the Vale these days. He gave a childish pout that combined with his clean-shaven face almost made the Queen of Andalia forget that he was well into manhood. A smile returned to his face. I also have a letter from Damon and I thought you would want me to bring it here. Shall we excuse ourselves to some place quieter to see what our baby brother has to say? Lyanna was shocked. Ever since he had been reported missing from the Citadel, she had often wondered where her younger sibling had been all this time. Yes, I will inform the servants to bring some food and arbor for us. I'm curious to see what he's been up to. Rennie chuckled sarcastically. Maybe he was off with the snarks and grumpkins and riding ice dragons. Soon the brothers and sisters were secluded together and leaning in to hear what the letter contained. Lyanna watched as her brother Rio broke the wax seal and began to read aloud. My dear brothers and sisters, how are you faring? I hope all is well and that Andalia is experiencing much prosperity under our new queen. You are probably wondering why I left my apprenticeship at the Citadel and have gone my own way in life. Whilst I regret never having the chance to serve as maester in Sevensport now, I feel it is better for me to grow on my own. While the Citadel was a fascinating experience, the maesters are as curious about new knowledge as a fish is curious about the meaning of its own existence. The Archmaesters only regurgitate old knowledge and belittle those who seek knowledge of the higher mysteries such as myself. As for the Grand Maester, he has the attitude of... Hilario went quiet, blinking for a few moments before looking to peer sheepishly. 
Keep going, Rio. I want to hear this. Her eyes flashed in a way that Liana realised was similar to when she had heard the bawdy tales of knights of the Old Lands when they had been children. Rio turned back to the page and kept reading. He has the attitude of someone who believes that their arse is the arse of knowledge itself, and that their farts can cure any disease. My departure could have something to do with a small incident involving said Grand Maester, five whores, some books on Yunkish poses, and me walking in on them. He says he was conducting experiments, but who can say for certain? Liana could feel her face growing quite hot at such a tale, though she could hear her siblings trying to hold back laughter, with even Benfrey biting his lip and giving silent chuckles. Hilario continued, Still, I'm quite happy where I am. I have a loving wife and a place where I can seclude myself and ponder the wonders of the world. I am currently working on a family history. When I am done, I will be certain to give you all copies. I hope someday to come myself to see your faces again. If you wish to visit me or write to me, I am currently on Witch Isle. I hope to see you soon. With all my love, your baby brother, former acolyte, Damon. Liana felt a wave of comfort knowing that her baby brother had been safe but she couldn't help but ponder what he said about the Citadel's stagnation. She was no scholar herself, God, but she could find a way to make him proud, and maybe, just maybe, be able to bring him home once again. Okay, so we've got to see a little bit more about Liana there. Um, I'm hoping that we can get this claim to him. Can we actually do anything with the Stormlands if we try to declare war on them? Can we actually... We can declare war to claim, yeah, nothing for ourselves. We can offer them a non-aggression pact, which is interesting. What's going on with the Westerlands? Why have they got someone independent? They are currently defending against Samuel of Samuel, Goldgreen's host. Ah, okay, so he's got a little host invading. I don't think they're going to cause the Westerlands too much trouble with their 123,000 manpower. Well, 124,000 manpower. That is absolutely terrifying especially once the grandlands get back under their control that is going to be scary but um yeah let's um continue um some raiders i'm not interested what can we do here we can upgrade a holding in seven sport which holding is it owen's hold um well it is the holding of our husband so yeah why not let's upgrade that that means we are gonna to have to send our hand of the king to improve holding in seven sport so there we go benfrey we've got a little job for you it's awesome how much our council loves us peers a little bit what's her um, peers opinion of us so low for um, there's vicious rumours about us apparently, and because she's a title claimant, that's fine. Can we reappoint Enger the Evil yet to Lord, uh, the Master of Whisperers? Yes, we can. Perfect. It's great to have him back on board. There's not really any plots or stuff. Is there anything that we could pick as a plot? Not really. There's no need to kill people. We don't really want to kill any of these people. Um, not much we can do plot wise so i don't really know what to do with anger the evil there aren't any factions so there's we'll just leave okay he's back at least he's on 100 though but there's nothing we can do with him at present do we have any minor titles to give away we've got an amazing queen's guard of course we need a court tutor who have we got um our mace of it he's not overly impressive this is why we need to get damon snow back in our court he would be the perfect court tutor <gasps> and perfect mace our council is full yes okay perfect we have got enough money to start colonising, but I don't want to go for that. We're obviously building those crown jewels at present, so we'll leave that for now. Our diplomacy is still very impressive. Is there anything else we could do? We could hold a summer fair. I think we're still doing our feast at present now, aren't we? It is still ticking away slowly. Let's forward things along. Aha, the guests have finally arrived in Sevensport. They have been given bread and salt, as is their guest right. All is now ready, and the cooks have worked day and night preparing the food. Our stocks of Pentoshi pale uh, amber wine have been replenished, and the palace has never looked lovelier. Welcome to my feast. Um, I rushed around trying to get everyone to work harder, making sure everything was ready for the feast. I waited impatiently for my friend Mega to arrive, but still did my best to make sure every guest felt welcome and found their designated place at the high table. She never showed up. How dare you, Mega Rack? I love that name, with a full-on porn star name. Uh, a minor property owner of Sevensport has come to court seeking justice. He accuses your courtier, Sir Mark Orson of arson, burning down one of his buildings without any provocation. Well, he is a bit of a loon. Uh, guards arrest him, make him pay. Uh, the witness and evidence are not enough. We lose 100 prestige. We gain the trait Arbiter. Mm, we'll make him pay recompense for now then. Um, summer is nearly at an end, and so autumn and the harvest is upon us. The feasting shall celebrate this time with food from throughout Undalia, including boar, goose and berries, salmon, lobster um, and lobster brought to seven spots as part of this. You must decide how much of the harvest is to be set aside. We'll set aside a large portion considering we had such a bad winter last time. It's probably best that we um, 
do make sure that we do that. Um, I was overcome by excitement and curiosity when Arnulf informed me the crown jewels were completed. As I am waiting in my throne for the servants to carry the great box across the room, I struggle not to leap up and meet them halfway. When I finally touch the heavy lid, my hands are shaking. Um, Regilia, worthy of a true queen. The crown of majesty, emerald scepter, and sword of hero. So let's have a look at these new things that we have had, had it added to our treasury. We have, so we already had the crown of scars, so we've got the crown of majesty, which is a new crown, an emerald scepter, which is awesome. We also have a ruby scepter, of course, already, and a golden sword, and a sword of heroes, was it? Yes, a sword of heroes, or, or an ornamental a weapon is an impressive sight. The blade is gilded and the hilt is adorned with foreign precious stones, such as, such as rubies and sapphires. Awesome. So we've got some nice stuff in there to add to that prestige. Why are we wearing the falcon crown? We don't want to wear the falcon crown. We want to wear the crown of Andalia, please. We also want to have Mother's Mercy equipped, even though we won't probably use it, but why not? Okay, let's continue on. That... Okay, that looks like a driftwood crown. It doesn't look like the <laughs> crown of Andalia in the slightest. Um, a Vekar has died. That's nothing too important. The last of the guests have returned home and everyone agreed it was this year's finest feast. It improved everyone's opinion of us. Our diplomacy goes up by two and vassal opinion as well. So that gives us 23 diplomacy now, which is awesome. It's a shame we can't do something to try and get that learning a little bit better. Let's hold a summer fair. Why not? We'll have one last summer fair before winter. Another chance to get people on side. What do we need to go on a foreign tour? Um, there's nothing we can do at the minute. Oh, I'm surely with child. My husband will be pleased. Okay, perfect. Please, please be a son. News has reached court that a claimant to my titles, Alex, is hiring men for an attack against me. Alex Snow, our half-sister, who is the wife of Jamie Mudd. Oh dear, I hope she is not prone to accidents. How dare you? Okay, so she's the Lady of Old Stones. Interesting. Right, what can we actually do to the Iron Islands? We were to declare war on them. We can do for du jour claim on the neck, or we can go for a full blown invasion of the Iron Isles. I think that's what we'll do. But let's wait and see. If we get a son, that's what we'll do to celebrate. To celebrate Andalia having its first son born in years, first trueborn son. Amira Firehand has died a natural death at the age of 70. Okay. Enger Firehand has had mace added to his treasury. So yeah, if we get a sun to celebrate, we will invade the Ironborns. A trade port has been built in Darlston's Key. That's nothing to do with us. Lady Zora of Blackwood ransom Pera from the clutches of Lord Moribald the Fearless. Okay. I had invited a monkey trainer to the summer fair and the performance went well until one of the monkeys refused to ride on top of a pig. The trainer beat the monkey with a stick, which led to the other monkeys to attack the trainer, binding him and hitting him with his own stick. Serves him right. Um, he shouldn't have beaten that poor creature. We'll go for that. That gives us more diplomacy. That puts us up to 24 diplomacy. So Liana's diplomacy is very, very impressive. Um, an errant monk is disturbing the summer fair by preaching about sins in the end of the world. His drivel is frightening some, but most of the crowd around him is mocking and laughing at him. Uh, he's just another part of the entertainment. We lose some pieta. Kick him out. No, we'll just lose a little bit of pieta. We can afford to do that. Um, what have we got here? Commander of Andalia. Okay, so we've got a space for a commander. Then freelancer. Of course, he's absolute. Oh no, Donald Crownless. Let's go for Donald Crownless. And Ben Freelancer's just our bodyguard for now. Um, the Lord of the Bloody Gate has died. That's fine. And he had some links, which is interesting. He had a lot of links, which is interesting. So was he a maester? Yes, he was a... Oh, he was a maester. Okay, yes. I thought he said master of the gate. No, maester. Um, oh, the child is in the mood for something different today. What should I eat? It does not matter what, as long as it's a lot. We gain 100 prestige and health. I wonder what a quail's foot tastes like. Lose 2.3 gold. I'm really feeling hungry for hare's head. Okay, um, I want trout's eyes and now... We go for this, we gain the trait Gluttonous, which I don't really want to gain, but it does improve our health. Let's just go for the Quail's Feet. I don't I don't want to get Gluttonous as a trait. High King Agar of the Iron Isles has declared Ironborn Invasion of Brimstone on Lord Lionel. Brimstone, oh my god, so now they're invading Dawn. They're, they're really spreading out their kingdom. Uh, the peddlers are loading their wares and the merchants are taking down their stalls. The jugglers strolling players and the other entertainers are preparing to leave. The summer fair is over for this year. Gain 5 prestige. Is there much else that we can do? Not really at present. We can employ new courtiers, but there's no point doing that. So, yeah, there's not a lot we can do. There's nothing else new. Your Grace, Queen Liana, Broomstone is under attack. 
I'm not getting involved. You're far to the south and we're going to attack them ourselves anyway. At first, the signs were small, easily dismissed as coincidences. But now they are becoming too frequent to be ignored. I will give birth under auspicious stars. I am surely blessed. Okay, so we could get a child of destiny. Lady Sybil the Young has declared the next civil war for... Okay, so changing... Okay, so we've got some random guy in charge of the neck now. Yeah, we'll leave them to do that civil war. It's going to help us when we invade the neck soon and try and reclaim our lands. As well as Flint's Finger and other bits. Byra's, Byra's host is invading the Ironborn. I don't really care. Stefan Roseheart has had wolf... No! 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 Stefan Roseheart died a natural death at the age of 65. Not Stefan! We've lost Colmore Bloom and Stefan Roseheart within two episodes of each other. No, not Stefan... I'm absolutely devastated. Lord Stefan the Warrior has passed, leaving behind his pathetic excuse for his son, Lord Ambrose of White Star, who is fucking shit compared to his father. Um, Stefan, okay, so he's had Wolfsbane removed. That is gut wrenching. I am so sad about that. Lord Dane is the wise used a favour on Master Arnulf of Goldenfield to force him to join all their factions. Is that for the Crown Loyalist? Yes, perfect. So I'm not going to complain about that. News has reached court that a claimant to my title, Sarah, is hiring men for an attack against me. Sarah Bolton, our cousin. Okay. Oh dear, I hope she's not prone to accidents. We've got too many men to worry about this. No one's going to be able to invade and only the West could really oppose us at present. Right, so we need a new Master of Laws now that poor old um, Stefan Roseheart has passed away. Who do we have? We have Benfrey Lancer with his ridiculous... Diplomacy, but he is one of our King's Guard. Um, we do have Yorick Templeton. Let's go for Yorick Templeton and get him to fabricate a claim on the Trident, as that's what we need to get under our control next. I'm just waiting for this son now. A son was born to Kristen Creed and Alera um, Saldoris, named Sandor Creed. Nice name. And I think that just said that Lord Malister has passed away from his wounds as well. So who. Yes, we now have Lord Barion of Chiltern and Seagod. I really need to try and get Chiltern away from him. He doesn't shouldn't have that. I've already took it away from him once because it's making us a little bit of border gore down south. The Bank of Pentos, your grace. A new bank has been established in Prince's Shore. Magister Shuriko Thelis of the Andal Coast has used his wealth to found the Bank of Pentos and has built a grand new bank building in the city to house about vaults of coin. The new bank is now ready to issue loans to interested parties. Interesting news. We also need a new commander now that Stefan is dead, so we will go with Benfrey Snow. Uh, your grace, for some time now, I've been in the employ of High King Willard, but now I seek a better station. Let's have a look at you, sir. Jacqueline Westerosi Valyrian, Dragon Rider, go away. No. I'm not interested in any Dragon Riders coming to Andalia. It's annoying that we're already getting some doing it. Uh, Lord Beatrice of Snakewood has declared Snakewood War for Sir Yorick Claim on Northworld on Laid. Okay, can we... um? command you to end this war please your grace i will obey of course perfect we don't want any civil wars lord Andrew of breakstone has inherited lordship of breakstone okay the hunters that's fine i just want to find out if we're going to have a son now blessing on you and your house i've been appointed as your regent right so we're very close to child but please be a son it can't be another daughter surely not another daughter watch it be a son and then it'll be stillborn or something robin of sealskin point peasant revolt was declared peasant revolt upon the ironborn that's good for when we decide to attack your grace, my house has been cruelly disposed of its lands and incomes, leaving us with no home and no seat. I humbly request that you offer us land and refuge in Andalia. In return, I offer you, uh, I offer just recompense and House Rumbold's eternal loyalty. Yours, Sir Willem of House Rumbold. Um, we gain 200 gold and we give him the Lordship of the Cross Fort. Uh, no, you're not very impressive. So, no, I'm not sure you are landless for a reason. I'm keeping that land for myself for now. Lord Maynard of Silverreed has used the title Lordship of Greywater Watch. Okay, interesting. So the Fens now hold Greywater Watch, which is very interesting. So I'll keep an, eye, um, keep an eye on that and what's happening there. The Regency for Queen Lyanna has ended. Oh, for fuck's sake, we've had another daughter. <laughs> A daughter was born to Queen Lyanna, the Kinslayer, and High King Ambrose of Andalia, named Gwyn. And she's club-footed. Um, that's so annoying. That is so annoying. We'll name her Jonquil after... We haven't got a Jonquil, have we? We've got Kyra and Violet. Yeah, we'll name you Jonquil then after poor Jonquil who died. Okay. Oh my god, and we've... Oh no. A son was born to say Benjikot, seven star, a mega rat named Roman. Oh, I thought that was us then. But okay, at least it's a male seven, some form of male 
seven star let's have a look at him and there's nothing overly impressive about him let's name him let's go for an enger we haven't had an enger for a while enger seven star perfect oh for god's sake lord maynard of silver has made the lordship of great water watch his primary title okay so that's a third daughter for queen liana now we really 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 need a son so desperately Okay, Lordship of Dot. Okay, not sure what's going on there, but okay. Right, what's going on with this sister? Are these currently independent? They are, so we can actually force vassalization of the neck. So let's send. They will surely on their own. Can we do it on this bit as well and get you under our control? Force vassalization. But I don't think we can offer vassalization, unfortunately. So let's call up the Firehand Armor. 4,000. Let's march it onto there. We'll call up. Um, Let's call up these other armies as well, just so we can take it quick, Claire, before they go back to normal. Let's send all our men there. Do you know what? Let's call up the Roseheart and Seven Star Army as well, just to end it even quicker. And then we can maybe go to war with the Ironborn. These will be quick wars to get these back under our control. I can't believe we had another daughter. That is so infuriating. Why are we leading an armor? I do not want us leading an armor. Go with Donald Crownless instead. Manfred has arrived at our court. Who are you? I, okay, he died instantly. Recently, I've noticed a pitiful state of my daughter, Princess Violet. I've just been informed that that's the case. Um, that the case of her aches and fatigue is a case of the flu. Call for the physician at once. Then we want to make sure our daughter's safe. We need a son so badly. It's so annoying. Lord Lionel of Sandstone accepted High King Agar of the Iron Isles peace offer. So that means that the Ironborn have now taken more Dornish land, doesn't it? Yes, they have. Wow, which is impressive. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell is going on here? Lord Roland the Oak has inherited... Oh, no, his wife has inherited Old Town. Why is Old Town part of Andalia? I don't want this. I do not want this. We're going to have to swap that back over because that's ridiculous. Stupid, stupid AI. Yeah, I'm going to give that back to the Westerlands because it makes no sense whatsoever. And we need an advisor on the council, so we've lost an advisor. We'll go for, let's have a look who we've got. Someone with decent diplomacy. Someone from a powerful house, maybe. Um, let's go for Benjikot, seven star. Why not? He's pretty decent. And special title, yeah, just colonization. We don't want to go for any colonizing. Your grace, we received word from the North Queen at Berenna has led them in a correlation in the defense of... Okay, so the Stark Queen is going to help the Neckmen for some reason. No idea why. Your grace, we received word from the Westlands. High King Willard has led... Oh, for God's sake. So the um, Lannisters are coming to war with us as well now. Right, so we need to attack these lands quickly then. Uh, Winfred Stark is currently under my control. Her relative Queen Berenna Stark is currently opposing us. It's not her fault. It's not Cregan's fault either. It's not Wendell's fault either. Nothing to do with any of those. Let's just go and take this land quickly to get it back under our control before we get attacked. Uh, a host is invading the north again. Come on, lads. Get into the net quickly so that we can get it back under our control before the freaking Westerlands start marching north on us. Very worried about that. I'm surely... Oh, for God's sake, again. We're with child again so quickly. Perfect. Okay. Hopefully, please be a son. Flipping Liana is popping out those kids. Please be a son. She's a baby machine. Right, so that's the war for, Cher for Cherwell. Done. That's a quick battle. Perfect. And we've also caught a prisoner. No one of importance, though. Not too well defended, so once the rest of our men get here, we'll assault it so that we can end that war quickly. And then we'll march on to Grey Crown as well and take that. My prisoner, Sir Lucatine, is complaining about his dark cell. Let him rot for now. Well, hopefully we can ransom him and get a bit of money. Measures, right, 7,000 here. We can go for the assault in four days. Lord Damien, the lawgiver, used a favour on Lady Jonquil of Sunrise Keep. Okay, seems to be a lot of Jonquils around as well, doesn't there, at present? Let's march these 9,000 on to Grey Crown instead. And there we go, we can assault. There we go, 100% perfect. We need to end these war before people get up north. Offer peace and force demands, perfect. That's under our control. Can you march on to Greycran as well? Be a very, very easy victory. He's under our vassalization as well, which is perfect. We won't demand religious conversion. We'll leave them to have their own religion. It's only because the AI messed up the fact that we've got to retake these lands anyway. So, 
and we will retake the rest of them soon, as well as the Flint's Fingers and the Riswell lands as well. Um, your Grace, I've collected an ample tax revenue, 120 gold, awesome, well done, Lord Corpory. Right, can we assault this in nine days' time? If we forward along, hopefully we can get the second child out before the end of the episode, and hopefully a son. Uh, your prisoner, Sir Lucatine, requested an audience with you. Upon meeting him before the court, you hear he is offering to pay his own ransom. I accept. My dear husband, Ambrose, is suspicious of my pregnancy. He is here right now asking if the child is really his. Assure him of my faithfulness. He does have the paranoid trait. I remember him doing that the first time Leanna got pregnant. Right, let's assault, assault Grey Crown. Perfect, there we go. Lord Enger the Evil has declared Lord Enger's claim on Cherwell War on Lord Torrent of Cherwell. Lord Maynard of the Grey Cliffs has inherited High Lordship of Grey Cliffs. Oh, Lord Owen has died. All the old people are dying in this episode, it would seem, which is such a shame. But his so uh, grandson, Lord Maynard, is very, very, very impressive. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he turns out. Siege of Tams Cranog, victory. So let's offer peace and enforce demands. Yes, the Andalian Grey Crown and Vassalization War has ended. Queen Leanna of Andalia has won. Let's command Enger the Evil to end his war. He best do as he's told. Your Grace, I will of course obey. Perfect, because the Cranog men don't belong to you. God, I dread to think what Enger the Evil would do to the Cranog men. I really do. We've got an open council position, a high admiral now, the term. Lord Greystark is dead. Who have we got? Let's go for Mark Orson, as he is a um, basically an Andal cell sale, so he'll make a good a good one of those. And we need a commander, so we'll go with Benjakot, as he's a decent commander, our brother-in-law. The war has ended. Do you wish to reappoint the old council? Yes, I do. We'll hopefully be able to take the rest of the Iron Isles pretty soon as well, which is good. Did it just say that Lord Belmore had died as well? Yes, he has. So he's been replaced with his daughter, Lady Elena Belmore of Strongsong, who's also rude, just like him, and honest and brave. So she's interesting. I quite like her, actually. It'll be interesting to see how she gets on. We've got one, 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 one for money. Colmore Brightmire has called in a favour on Willis. Lord Garrett of Lee Good Keep has used out the title Lordship of Withers from Tilly of Gaston Grey. Doesn't really affect us. I'm just waiting now to see if we can have a son for our fourth child before ending this episode. So let's forward things along and get to that point. Uh, your grace, for some time now, I've been in the employ of Lady Elaine. Let's have a look. You're a dragon rider. Go away. I'm getting so fed up with these dragon riders there infesting Andalia. I may go through on console commands and just kill them all off. Queen Sarah of Andalia has declared Queen Sarah's claim on Andalia War and Queen Lyanna, the Kinslayer. Okay, Bol a Bolton who has seven star blood. Okay, interesting. Um, Andalia is at a state of war. They will surely honour their obligation. So let's have a look at you. You've got 33,000 men apparently and where have you landed those 33,000 men, my dear? So that's interesting. So we've got a war. Ambrose has enlisted the help of some of the women from our staff to cheer me up and keep my mind off the pregnancy while I wait for the child to be born. If nothing else, it will be nice to have somebody to talk to when I'm not dealing with my duties as queen. I need to make sure that we uh, can't lead armies as well. Fine, I suppose. That improves our health. Right, so where is this great new host going to land? Let's call up all of our bannermen. Meet in Seven's Port. We've got the 2,500 up there. Can you actually... It's better if we bring you by ship because you just take way too long, if not. Let's gather our men together. And where is this host even going to land? Let's get our Vale men to meet up in... Let's meet up in Willowood. I imagine Willowood will have a pretty good supply limit. Yes, 38,000. And we'll march these men down to Willowood as well. Uh, you can't go that way. So if you can go round this way, please. 120 there. Can you march on to 7th spot as well? Where's this host going to land then that we're now currently at war with? At the age of 34, you're a subject. Kennard died. No idea who you are. I cover my mouth and try to contain a giggle. Spotting a servant discreetly lighting up a candle, I realise that it's night already. This isn't the first time I spend my entire afternoon gossiping about friends and family with my guests without even realising it. But I cannot deny that this new habit is really helping me get through the pregnancy. I really do love talking. Gain the trait Gregorus. Gain the trait... Yeah, hopefully we get Gregorus. But of course we don't, even though it's 50%. Perfect. Of course we didn't. Would have been a decent trait to have for her, but never mind. Right, so where is this host? Peace be with you. I've been appointed as your regent. Okay, so we're going in now to have our child. It's really annoying that we now own Old Town. We need to get rid of that. That's 
really, really annoying. Let's forward things along. Wait for that child to be born, and that's where we'll end the episode. Boris Durandon has had Kin of the Stag added to their treasury. Interesting. Uh, one of your jailers has brought word from the cells. He says your captive, a maester bar in Star, was covertly set free during the night by a small band of men. In their desperation for escape from the castle, one of them was captured, and after further questioning, it's revealed they were in the employ of Lord Danies Corbury. Oh dear, Danies. Does that mean we can imprison you? Um, going again? Oh, no, because it's the will of the council, and we currently have our regent in charge, so we can't do anything at present about that which is annoying the regency of queen liana has ended please be a son oh you are having a laugh oh my god a fourth daughter this this is literally taking the piss now this really is taking the piss andara seven star we will name her rena why not we've not had a rennie seven star in a while okay and a son was born to Sir Benjikot, seven star. Okay, so they've had another son, which is interesting. Um, let's name him, and he's Sickler, which is a shame. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll name him Roman. Why not? There seems to be a lot of Roman seven stars. Okay, so at least there are some males being born, but none to Liana, which is infuriating. Right, but we will end this episode here, guys. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. I hope that you have enjoyed. Um, please don't forget to like and comment down below, and hopefully I'll see you all very soon for the next episode of The Knights of Andalia.